The area is now a federal investigation into the deadly Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse in Baltimore. The FBI is looking into whether there were violations of criminal law in the disaster that claimed the lives of six construction workers. News 4's Darcy Spencer is live in Baltimore now with the latest. Darcy? Well, and you know, the salvage efforts are continuing at the bridge site here behind me. And from day one, elected leaders said they would hold accountable anyone responsible for this disaster. There are now multiple investigations, and that now includes the FBI. The FBI now investigating the container ship crash that brought down the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore to see if any criminal laws were broken. FBI sources confirmed their agents boarded the Dolly cargo ship this morning armed with search warrants. An area of focus whether there were known mechanical issues with the ship before it left port. The Dolly lost power before striking the bridge nearly three weeks ago, killing six construction workers. Out there just filling potholes, not knowing it was going to be their last day on earth. Attorneys representing some of those who died, welcoming the federal probe and announcing they're conducting their own investigation. They're also fighting efforts by the ship owner to protect its assets and limit compensation to the victims. This law was used to protect the owner of the Titanic. That's how ridiculous this is. Baltimore leaders also announced Monday the city will take legal action to hold the owner of the Dolly accountable and address the catastrophic impacts to the economy, environment, and port workers impacted by the disaster. News 4 got a look at the salvage efforts happening at the bridge and Sparrows Point, where large pieces of steel from the bridge are being brought by crane, dismantled, and recycled. This 450-ton piece, the largest so far. All the entities working together in that unified command to get this uh, to get this port open, but to make sure that the priorities of the safety of the public and the environment are always taken into consideration. Officials say they're holding the timeline previously announced for getting the channel reopened while moving methodically and safely with the goal of getting commerce flowing here again. We are still on schedule to open up the 35 foot channel by the end of April and the full channel by the end of May. We have over 300 responders working on this and we've had no injuries to date. We intend to keep it that way. Officials said they hope it wouldn't take much longer than the end of May to have the bridge completely removed from the river. Now, those attorneys also represent the sole survivor of this disaster. They told us today that he was in his car during a break when the bridge fell. He was able to roll his window down and escape through that window. He cannot swim, so he grabbed onto a piece of steel and waited to be rescued. Back to you. All right, Darcy Spencer live for us in Baltimore this afternoon. Darcy, thanks so much. The families of two of the men killed in the collapse and one of the survivors who was rescued from the water have filed a lawsuit. Attorneys representing the families announced that they are conducting their own independent investigation into the unnecessary tragedy. Attorneys are also calling for a thorough investigation into the multiple alleged prior issues with the Dolly before the Key Bridge collision. The families say that they are devastated that just days after the collision, the companies involved have put profits over fixing what the dolly destroyed. Lost Grace Ocean has temporarily lost a ship. Baltimore has temporarily lost a bridge. But six families have permanently lost fathers, uncles, brothers, irreplaceable loved ones. Again, the victims were filling potholes on the Key Bridge early that morning and were sitting inside their vehicles during a dinner break just before the impact to that bridge.